is Shropshire Live. Hi, it's Martin from Shropshire Live and we're at Sleep Airfield today. It's the home of Shropshire Aero Club and it's an absolutely beautiful day. And we're here today because uh, Virgin Balloon Flights have got their hot air balloon. Uh, it's not up at the moment, it's just the basket as you can see here at the moment. And they're going to be inflating this a little later on. They're going to be doing some pictures and so forth. And then they're going to take it up for a flight. And uh, I may be on the flight, but I'm not sure yet. I do have my backup plan just in case I decide to chicken out. But it's an absolutely gorgeous morning uh, this morning. It's just coming up to about uh, quarter to seven at the moment. And uh, we'll be flying a little later on, hopefully. So we can see now that uh, behind me the uh, Virgin hot air balloon is being inflated and it's uh, one of its maiden flights. This is a brand new balloon and uh, it's uh, going to be inflated in around about 15 to 20 minutes time. That's when it's fully inflated. They've got the fans now which is uh, cold air being blown in it to, it to inflate it. Now one of the people that's here, one of the pilots, is Kenneth Carlstorm. Now he's the owner and CEO of Virgin Hot Air Balloons. In fact, uh, for over 30 years he's been flying passenger balloons and he's actually one of the most experienced balloon pilots in the world. And he's flown actually in so many different places around the world. And hopefully we'll catch up with him later for a bit of a chat. I'm not sure if it's going to be the best idea I've ever but, done, but I'm finally on the blue. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I don't and we're about to take off. I've got to look at a map. Yeah, it is going to walk around there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So I'm uh, with two amazing pilots of these hot air balloons. And we've got Chris here, and Morning. we've also got uh, Ken as well. Now Ken Carlstone is the owner and the CEO of Virgin Hot Air Balloons. And you've been flying for 30 years, is that right? Uh, yeah, I started in 79, it's a little bit more than that. Wow, and you've been some amazing places uh, across the world. Where's the most amazing place that you've flown? I used to work in Kenya, in Masamara. I was down there for five years, and I think that's my favorite place. And you've also flown with some rather special people, like uh, we've got the late Stephen Hawking, and you adapted the balloon, is that correct? Yes, he had his own basket, he had adapter, which was given to him by Richard Branson, and I did uh, the flight with him in the Virgin Blue from Cambridge. Oh, I bet he, he found that amazing. And, and can people with disabilities come up in a hot air balloon, or is that Not, a problem? You have to have them specially adapted, uh, the baskets, and uh, there are a few people doing those flights, but in these baskets, no, it's not possible. So maybe that's something for in the future as well. And you also do balloon championships, is that right? Tell us about that. Yes, uh, competitions. Uh, this year we have the World Championships in Slovenia in September, so I'm part of the UK team there. And uh, last year we did European Championships in Hungary, I was part of the UK, UK team there too. Um, it's a totally different form of flying and there's a lot of different competitions. It's difficult to describe in very short sentence for what, what that's all about. Do you have to try and land in a certain place? Is that part of the skill or? You're not landing really, dropping markers, flying it through shapes. It's quite technical with loggers, uh, electronic loggers and things. So it's, it's, it's complicated. And do you enjoy that? I uh, love it, yeah. That's all I do now, that's really. Where do you think Hot Air Balloon is going to be in about 30 or 40 years time? Is it timeless or do you see, what do you see in the future of it? I think it's fairly timeless because in the last 30 years not much has changed. Burners has become a bit more efficient, um, deflation systems a little bit different, uh, but apart from that it looks about the same. I think we might start getting hydrogen burners perhaps, just for the environment, but uh, it's a little bit off yet because cylinders and other things has to be totally adapted. Brilliant. And Chris, how long have you been flying? About the same sort of time, actually. I can't actually remember when I checked out, but I always say 30, 35 years, something like that. So. And what got you interested into hot air ballooning? Uh, it's my mother's fault. She was at a drinks party with a balloon pilot and said you needed something to drive. So yeah, I started by doing the retrieves on the ground. <laughs> and you've flown some amazing places as well. Where's your favourite place? Uh, favourite for me is probably the Alps. Uh, I love flying over the Alps in the winter. Mm -hmm. fly across from sort of Austria down into Italy or something like that. How would you, it's really hard because we've just done, finished the flight now, how would you describe the experience as someone who's never been in a hot Um It's always a different one. I always say it's like, close your eyes, it's like walking on water. <laughs> but yeah, it's sort of, no, it's it's a sensation that you can only experience once you've flown really, yeah, you understand it. What's really weird for me is I'm absolutely petrified of heights. And uh, I had to sort of be convinced to go on here, and I was the fear sort of disappeared. It's very, very strange. Yeah, I mean, we've we take people up to clinically stuff from vertigo and stuff before now, but if you don't look straight down the side of the basket, and you just look dead ahead and slowly move your eyes down, you wouldn't know you were flying. No, you know, it's not like climbing a ladder or something because you're physically getting into something as opposed to climbing up. So yeah, that's probably and right. I think the peacefulness of it and the so it's so quiet that makes I don't know if that calms you down, but I just didn't feel nervous. I did when we went really high. <laughs> but I was like, oh, bring it down a bit, Chris. But yeah, yeah, it's often you get somebody that's gets a bit scared of heights they'll, they'll actually get lower and lower as you go higher they get lower in the basket <laughs> i've had that before that was me i, I was sorry. Yeah. Oh, corner that's amazing and uh so what do you think is the future of hot air ballooning do you think there's going to be new capsules new baskets or what, what no i think as ken said it's timeless um you know the wicker has been around for years um it's traditional the burners are developed and they carry on developing them but there's not a great deal they can do with them it's just mm -hmm. changing the fuel on them I was asking you when we were flying as well about uh, you can't lift, you can't steer it, but you can move it around the basket with the ropes. Yeah, you can turn it around on its own axis with the rotation vents. Um, mm -hmm. Not all balloons can do that, but yeah. certainly the rise ones we use. Um, and we use it mainly for landing or orientating the basket for landing for safety. Mm -hmm. um, although it does also give the other passengers a bit of a view halfway through the flight, so you're not always looking the same. And way. what's been your most trickiest landing? It must have been this one this morning, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know we got on the ground. Thank you so much, Chris, and uh, thank you so much, Ken. Thank you. Chris, <laughs> 
So I'm with Maria Wilkinson and she's the Head of Marketing at Virgin Balloon Flights. Hi there, Maria. Hello. Well, I've just come down in the balloon and uh, it was an absolutely amazing experience and you had to persuade me because I am scared of heights, but it's, it's weird, isn't it? It is very weird and yes, it did take a bit of persuasion, I will. I knew you'd do it in the end. I, I just knew, I had a feeling that you were definitely, you'd, you'd go for it, you'd go for it. Um, yeah, hot air ballooning is unusual in that way that you can be absolutely petrified of heights but the way a balloon works you've got no sense of movement because you go with the wind exactly the same speed as the wind where it's taking you you've just got a 360 panorama around you right out to the horizon so, so, it's like, so you, your brain can't judge how high up you are um, and because of that and it's such a peaceful experience that we fly an awful lot of people that are genuinely absolutely terrified of heights and yet they've done a balloon ride after a bit of coaxing but and they thought it was amazing your advice was to me is don't look right over the edge which i didn't do and i would stay back and then as i got more and more relaxed i was like okay and so i was really really surprised myself today and i'm really glad that you, you made me do it so um how many sort of flights do you do a year roughly we have a flying season which is march to october um, in most areas, some of the the, season, the flights will schedule um, a little bit further on to that into November in some areas, um, and we schedule those twice a day. Um, so there's a morning flight and an evening flight for the most part. Um, hot air ballooning is 100% dependent on the weather. Mm -hmm. um, so if the conditions aren't right on a day that we've got a flight scheduled, that flight can't go ahead. It's a simple safety. You know, we're not going to put that balloon up if the conditions are not safe to fly in it. I mean, we had a beautiful calm day today. The winds were maybe two miles an hour when mm -hmm. we were taking off. It was absolutely perfect. It was lovely. When you start hitting that sort of 10, 12 mile an hour winds, which are, you wouldn't necessarily feel that on the ground. It might feel like a very, very slight breeze, but when you've got a 400,000 <laughs> cubic feet of air bag um, above your head, that it has a real impact on that. So flights can get cancelled. Um, a lot of people do fly on their first time as well. It's 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 really is look of the draw, um, but that's how many we schedule. And depending on how favourable the weather is being to us over the course of that season, that's how it will sort of vary on how many of those flights might actually go ahead. But and who can actually fly? Is there, is there an age limit, or is it? Um... Could you have to be after 18? What's the, what's the limitation? Uh, we can fly children from age of seven. Um, if they are under the age of 16, they need to be, have their responsible adult with them, someone 18 or over that's actually going to be responsible for them. Um, there's no upper age limit, absolutely. We've flown 100-year-olds um, and, like, and seven-year-olds. We've done the whole spectrum. Um, and yeah, it's, th th there is, there's, yeah, there's a few other restrictions as well that we just need to be aware of. Um, but generally, anybody can do it. As long as you're fit and healthy enough to climb in that basket, you don't have any sort of underlying health conditions that you think could be impacted on that, then yeah, come and have a balloon ride. Amazing. And they make a good gift, don't they, if you buy a gift to go up in the balloon? They do, they make a really, really good gift. Um, it's something so different, um, you know, in, in some ways, and again, I'm biased, but you know, an experienced day, if you like, is a bit sort of ten a penny to an extent, you can do absolutely everything. A hot air balloon ride is something special. Um, and when I talked about the cancellations before, there are people that do experience those and they might actually have several before they finally fly. Um, it's hand on heart, it's one of the best things they'll ever do and it's absolutely worth doing. It's, yeah, it's a special thing. And how can people find out more information? Uh, website, uh, we're Virgin Balloon Flights, so we're a national operator, we're the only national operator in the UK. Um, our website is www.virginballoonflights.co.uk or you can give us a call, our team's open Monday to Friday, 01952 And you promised me a little bit of champagne, so you better go and get that then. Yes, yes, yeah, I'm just waiting for the car to return with that in so I can pour that for you, that's a <laughs> well, no problem. Forward to it. Yeah, it's a nice way to end the flight. We, we end all of the flights with that, like a celebratory post-landing toast, we call it. Sounds brilliant. Thank you very much, Maria. No worries, thank you. This is Shropshire Live.